Greetings from Goblin Valley, Nisedal, Norway. I'm here so you don't have to be. Some days ago I got a request um, why don't you test out uh, wicking and cotton and, uh, and absorption and, and stuff like that. And I t uh, said that, um, well, uh, P. Busardo and uh, Waping Biker has done it. And uh, Japanese cotton is cheap and, and uh, just as good and uh, better even than a lot of uh, branded fancy cotton. But then the question came up, how tight should you wick? Now that piqued my interest immediately. So um, let's uh, use the methodology that uh, P. Busardo and Waping Biker uh, developed and used. And let's test it. How tight should it be? Here you see the coils and the setup. These are flat wire coils with an inner diameter of 4 mm. You see I do these tests for myself, so I will use uh, my coils and cotton like I normally do. And here you see them wicked. Notice the difference between the first to the left and the second to the right. I mean, these are huge cotton uh, on the right side. The three in the middle are almost equal. That's uh, the gentle, loose uh, wicking that I'm uh, used to practice myself and what I've learned. When I say learned, I mean, of course, the gentle uh, push, uh, pull through the coil. Now, here is the methodology as you have seen uh, before. It's a basket that I'm going to fill with uh, uh, e-juice and above you have the coils. The holes in the plastic plate on top are exactly 4 millimeters in diameter. So, uh, although the coils may differ, the holes in the plate does not. So, because the other guys uses uh, respectively blue and red, I'm using green eel juice. This is uh, not uh, plain uh, VG, this is what I use to vape. I use uh, uh, 80 to 20%, 80% VG and 20% PG, and that is what I'm using here. And uh, as you also saw, the wicks are only dipping half a centimeter into the e-juice. That means I, during my experiment, ref are refilling uh, this uh, basket of e-juice to make sure that only half a, half a centimeter of wick sticks down. And here you see that we only uh, a minute into the test can see some uh, differences. Number one is doing really bad. Number two, slightly better. Number three, slightly better than that. Number four is doing even better. And then I have the uh, unexplained phenomenon of number five. It's going to lag through the whole test and I don't know why. Uh, there might be something wrong with the cotton. I might, when I cut it, I cut it across the, uh, the, some of the fibers. I think that was what happened. But you also notice that number six hasn't come too far either. And these are not still shots. These are video. But uh, of course nothing is moving except the uh, aegis is creeping higher and higher on number four. And this is after five minutes and uh, the tendency looks like much of the same. And here we are after 10 minutes and I was really satisfied thinking that okay, the properly semi-firm, bit loose uh, wicking uh, will turn out to be the best. But then I looked a little bit closer to the right. 
and here we are after uh, 15 minutes I'm pouring a little bit of juice into the tray and I noticed that number six was very dark and dense in color and what was going on here? So I adjusted uh, the camera a bit to look underneath and I saw from left to right, uh, not counting number five, that the color up towards the, the board was darker and darker and darker. And I knew that number five might be a dud and the curve I thought I saw was an illusion. And by curve, I mean, uh, I thought that number two and uh, three and four should be best. But uh, there is a pattern that the vapor concentration get denser from number five to number six. If we disregard number five, which I eventually had to do. And this is after 30 minutes. And after 33 minutes, you can see there is saturation in the coil of number four and number six. Number six, you can see it has crossed over the last wrapping and you can spot some coloring over the last wrap on number six, but none of the others. And here we are at 40 minutes and not much has changed. But number six is obviously the most saturated if you look between the wraps. Forget number five. Uh, look at number three, four and six and see how uh, the number six have more coloring both above and below this board. And here we are after one hour and um, uh, the, by the looks of it, number six was moist all the way up on the left side of the cotton and the back side. And uh, the number four was, had the second most uh, saturation um, in the column and in the coil and above the coil. Uh, and, yeah, I can't show you uh, everything by moving around the camera but uh, trust me there uh, when I tell you where I see a uh, coloring <laughs> okay and after one and a half hour it suddenly looked like number five uh, sprung to life and uh, even the, though the underside uh, does not compare, um, I think we. Uh, I, I still want to exclude number five, and uh, and uh, we see a, here a very clear pattern that the tighter you uh, wick, the more saturation you get within the coil and the faster the uh, e-juice spreads upwards. Now how tight is it? I can't give you a number but I have never wicked a coil so tight that I did number six. This is like really pulling your cotton through and holding your coil steady with two fingers to get it done. And here you see a better shot of the underside and the pattern here is obvious. You see that there is something wrong with the cotton on number five. The, some of those uh, uh, vertical strands must have been cut. It's just that it's an accident. But you see the more to the right, the more juice you get, the bigger the wick, uh, the more juice you get. Now pulling out the cotton was also re revealing because on the top you saw how much juice was actually where the coil was placed because the juice was scraped off. And you see three, four and six progressively more juice around the hole after you pulled the cotton through. And after that why don't go even tighter and test out different uh, cotton and I'll come back to you and explain what all these are in a bit. 
But anyways, here they uh, go into the tub and uh, in a bit I'll explain to you what these are. But uh, let us just put them into the um, green stuff. And uh, again, and there are six very different uh, wicks this time of different looseness and tightness. And here we are at the starting point. The left one is um, almost identical to number six. This is the control uh, wick from the last experiment. Number two, there I have removed the layers uh, in between the Japanese cotton. Number th three, that is the layers I have removed. Only the layers, because I noticed they, they, they sometimes wick uh, pretty quickly, like a streak through the coil. Number four is a layer sheet from the Japanese cotton that is rolled together in a roll. Number five, that's the biggest cotton piece I've ever pushed through a coil. It is massive. I really, really had to pull to get that one through. It was, was with a lot of difficulty I did that. Now just watch the E just creep up because this is uh, from the get-go. This is from, from zero minutes. So you can watch that while I talk with you. The one furthest to the right is uh, 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 cotton bacon. And it is wicked just as hard as the most left one, the control from the last uh, experiment. A, a really tight, really big and tight wick that I found out was superior to the uh, semi-firm stuff I had done before. So there you have it. The first one is, uh, and, and most of them are just as uh, tight as each other, it's only number five that is super tight and super big. You, you can just watch uh, beneath the plate, then you see how big number five is um, compared to the other ones, which are more or less uh, the same size. So it's a layer experiment and of course it's a tightness experiment with number 5 versus number 1. After a minute or after 5 minutes I changed the light a little just to, to give you better contrast on, on the wick on uh, the bottom. And uh, nothing's going to happen for a, a good while. So uh, if you're going to watch something, watch uh, the bottom uh, wicks and, and follow the, uh, how that goes. You see number one is going quite strong and number three, the one with only layers, uh, separation layers from the cotton, is going strong. And of course the big bastard, number five, is going very strong. But surprisingly, the, the same from the last experiment is going well here too. And here we are after 10 minutes and they look more or less the same, except maybe number two, the one with only loose cotton, maybe looks uh, the worst, but that could be superficial. We don't know until we open this stuff up a bit and, and look more closer. But anyways, they, they, they are practically the same, uh, most of them. The uh, number five is of course much darker because it's thicker and fatter and all that. This is after 14 minutes and I think I see uh, number one and number two and number three and four and five and definitely number six breaking through the plate which their all holes are four millimeters the the coils may vary micro millimeters but the holes in the plate are equal this is after 20 minutes and if you look between the wraps you can see that there is coloring 
on all, all six of these. Most in number two, three, four, and of course number six. Number six is going really well by the looks of it. Number one is lagging a bit from where I stand, but uh, you can't always trust what you see with your naked eye on this stuff. So um, we'll have to wait uh, some uh, more minutes to draw a conclusion. And after uh, 24 minutes we have a winner. There are some coloring above the wrap on number 5. Now isn't that a delightful surprise? And the minute after the uh, uh, cotton bacon number 6 broke through on the back side of the coil. And after uh, 5 more minutes uh, to th uh, 32 minutes all of them had uh, basically gone above the top uh, wrapping, had colouring above the top wrapping and I was very disappointed with my number one. And I looked closer at number one and saw it had a dark stripe going up above the top wrap after uh, 32 minutes and I didn't know how long it had been there. So after 40 minutes I decided to see what is going on here. And uh, I started peeling this apart. And there is clear coloring inside number one. That was the, the one that was number six. That's a mix of, of uh, the division, division layer in the Japanese cotton and plain cotton just wrapped really tight and stuffed through the coil. And number two, that was the Japanese cotton without any layers. That was uh, okay too in the core. The number three with just the layers did not perform that well. And number four, the layer roll. <laughs> that was also a huge disappointment. And here you have the big bastard. And it is very, very saturated just above the uh, top uh, wrap and uh, yeah I was just playing around with these uh, top uh, cotton things and here you see the last one and it is equal to the first one in the row. That was my kids coming home so I better start <coughs> wrapping this stuff up. And here we uh, see them uh, one by one uh, in a close-up and there is really not that huge difference between them. Well, some fell through like rolling uh, stuff that was not good. But uh, the other ones and uh, especially number five, the biggest of them. Yeah, that's number um, four. Uh, there's only a hint in the center uh, of it. So um, that's no good. But the number five is um, it's much, much better. Um, very, very saturated in, in the center of it. So that was... Uh, unexpected but but it, it might look like that the more cotton you have and the tighter you pack it the more uh, of e juice you get in the center of it and uh, I thought that was just uh, BS when people said yeah you have to pack your coil tight if you want to avoid spatter but there might be some truth in doing that and the cotton bacon was also all right and here we see from number two to number six on the underside. And we see that number five is an absolutely massive wick to deal with. 
and uh, the rest of them from two to six are actually quite quite similar. The uh, number four, the layer roll, uh, is uh, some worse, and the only with the layers are also not as good as the others. And this is also very interesting because after I pull the coil through down you can see that on number 3 and 4 there are not much liquid around the hole. But on number 1 and 5 and 6 there is a lot of it. And here we see close-ups of the holes. There is uh, some juice around number two and less around one and three and a little bit more on number four. That's tighter coils, wicks and five and six. There you see how much liquid that is left when you pull the wick out. So it might look like the more wick material you have, the more juice you are going to get and the faster the juice is flowing through the cotton or the wick material. That's what it looks like at least. So the question still stands. How tight should you wick your cotton? There is not a clear cut answer but the tighter um, wicking moved the um, e-juice fastest through the coil and uh, by tight I mean tighter than I have ever wicked my own coils there might be a practical upper limit to this. Like if you have to pull the cotton through with tongs, that might be too tight. And uh, it's obvious to me that we should wick tighter. There shouldn't be, oh, just the slightest bit of resistance. Just feel the resistance. Just watch the coil move a bit when you pull your wick through. I mean, you should hold your coils with your finger and pull. That's how tight it is. I can't give you a number. I, I, I plan to do uh, weights and lift and see when the coils would let go and stuff like that, but I didn't. You should wick so tight that you have to hold your coil in place with two fingers and you should really drag it in. So um, uh, I, I use the bacon cotton as the, the cotton bacon bacon. <laughs> I use the cotton bacon as a reference because we all know it. And uh, I, uh, the Japanese cotton I have is just something I bought in bulk for a couple of years ago. And it performed uh, just as well. So, so there is a reference for you. And uh, just watch the video again. And uh, sorry for not giving you any spectacular footage. Uh, there are so minute uh, details that uh, this would have taken forever if I should have uh, run around with the camera and shown you every little bit and aspect of this. So when I say I can see there is something on the back, I saw it and you just have to trust me. So let's, uh, let's just uh, end with uh, that. And... Uh, Wick harder! Yeah! <laughs>